Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to solve a one-dimensional motion problem involving two successive motion segments with different constant accelerations. Before we start, I want to remind us of our one-dimensional definitions for average velocity and average acceleration, respectively. And I also want to remind us that for each one-dimensional motion segment with constant acceleration, we have these equations at our disposal. Okay, here's the problem. Imagine that a car starts from rest and then accelerates to the east with an acceleration of magnitude 5 meters per second per second. And it maintains this acceleration for the first six seconds of motion. Then at the end of the first six seconds of motion, the car continues traveling to the east, but now with a constant velocity equal to whatever velocity it had at the end of the first six seconds. And then it maintains this constant velocity for four seconds. What we're asked to calculate is, for the first 10 seconds of motion, that includes this first six seconds and the next four seconds, what is the total displacement of the car and what is the car's average velocity? Before going any further, we should choose a coordinate system and then put our given quantities in terms of that coordinate system. So I am going to take our positive x direction to be to the east, so I'm going to indicate that right here. East is in the positive x direction. And then in that coordinate system, 5 meters per second per second to the east, well, that goes in as an acceleration component of positive 5 meters per second per second, where positive means to the east. And then for this next segment, constant velocity means no acceleration. That would mean that a sub x is equal to 0 during this 4 second constant velocity phase. Okay, let's tackle part A, calculating the total displacement for the first 10 seconds of motion. What we're going to need to do is calculate the displacement for the first 6 seconds of motion, and then calculate the displacement for the next 4 seconds of motion, and do that separately. The reason we need to do that is we don't actually have constant acceleration for a full 10 seconds. We have constant acceleration equal to 5 meters per second per second east for 6 seconds, then we have constant acceleration of zero for the next four seconds. So we have a segment of constant acceleration, another segment of constant acceleration, but they're different constant accelerations. So the acceleration changes in going from one segment to the next. These equations require a single value of the acceleration. So I can't use one of these equations for the full 10 seconds because the value of the acceleration changes six seconds into the motion. All right, so let's find the displacement for the first six seconds of motion. Now, anytime you're trying to find the displacement during an interval of constant acceleration, this equation should jump to mind. This equation gives you the displacement as a function of elapsed time. If you know the acceleration, which we do, and if we know the initial velocity, which we do. So let's take this equation and put it right here so we can work with it. We can then take our information for the segment of motion and plug it in. We'll have an elapsed time of six seconds. We'll plug that in for t. a sub x is five meters per second per second, and the initial x component of the velocity is zero because the car starts from rest. So let's take those numbers, plug them in, and put it right here. 0 times 6 gives us 0 for this part. 1 half times 5 times 6 squared gives us 90. Let's look at the units. We've got meters divided by second squared, but we're going to be multiplying that by second squared, so we'll get units of meters. So we're going to have delta x equals 90 meters for the first 6 seconds of motion. So the car travels 90 meters in the positive x direction during the first six seconds of motion. The positive x direction is to the east, so the car travels 90 meters to the east during the first six seconds of motion. All right, let's move on to the next segment of motion, the four seconds at constant velocity. Since we're looking to calculate a displacement in an amount of elapsed time, it makes sense to start with this equation. So let's take it and put it right here. Now, constant velocity means zero acceleration. That kills off this term here. So the displacement during this four second segment of constant velocity will be equal to the duration of that segment, four seconds, multiplied by the velocity at the beginning of that segment. 
Of course, since the velocity is constant for this segment, the velocity at the beginning of this segment will also be the velocity for the full duration of this segment. Now, here's a really important point. Since the beginning of the second segment of motion corresponds to the end of the first segment of motion, the initial velocity for the second segment of motion must equal the final velocity for the first segment of motion. So in order to calculate v sub x zero for the second segment of motion, the initial velocity for the second segment of motion, we need to calculate the final velocity for the first segment of motion. In order to do that, we can utilize this equation right here, which gives us the velocity as a function of time if we know the constant acceleration and if we know the initial velocity. So let's take this equation and put it right here. Applying this equation to this motion segment, what we're looking for is the velocity of the car at the end of this motion segment, which is six seconds after it started. So we want the velocity six seconds after it starts moving, given an acceleration of five meters per second per second in the positive x direction, and given an initial velocity in the x direction of zero because it starts from rest. So let's take those numbers, plug them in. Five times six gives us 30, and meters per second per second multiplied by seconds gives us meters per second. So the velocity at the end of this initial segment of motion is 30 meters per second in the positive x direction, which means 30 meters per second to the east. Now, as we said earlier, that's also necessarily the velocity of the car at the beginning of the second segment of motion. So in order to calculate the displacement during this second segment of motion, we can take the four second duration of this second segment of motion multiplied by the 30 meters per second in the positive x direction to get 120 meters of displacement. Keep in mind that this 120 meter eastward displacement is only the displacement for the second segment of motion. We also had a 90 meter eastward displacement for the first segment of motion. The total displacement will be the sum of these two individual displacements. So we can write that right here. Or in terms of a magnitude and direction, we can write delta r vector, which is a nice symbol for vector displacement, is equal to a displacement of magnitude 200 meters in the direction to the east. And that is the displacement vector for the first 10 seconds of motion. All right, now that we've calculated the total displacement for the first 10 seconds of motion, namely 200 10 meters to the east, or 210 meters in the positive x direction, it's relatively easy to calculate the average velocity for that same 10 second time interval. All we have to do is use the definition of average velocity in one dimension, which I'll rewrite right here. And then we can plug in the total displacement, 210 meters in the positive x direction, and the total amount of time it took for that displacement to happen, 10 seconds, and that comes out to 21 meters per second. In magnitude and direction notation, this would correspond to 21 meters per second to the east. I can write that right here. Before moving on, let's take a moment to think about what average velocity means. Average velocity can be thought of as the single constant velocity that would have been necessary to travel the same total displacement in the same total amount of time. So the car traveled 210 meters to the east in 10 seconds, it didn't do that at constant velocity, but for something to travel 210 meters to the east in 10 seconds and do so with constant velocity, it would need to travel at 21 meters per second to the east. That's what average velocity is. It's the single constant velocity that would have been necessary in order to do the same displacement in the same amount of time. Before signing off, I have a few closing comments. First, since these equations require a constant acceleration component in order to be valid, we can't use these equations for a single time interval that includes more than one acceleration. So for example, I couldn't use this equation for the full 10 seconds of motion because after six seconds, the acceleration changed from five meters per second per second east to zero meters per second. So I can use these equations 
in this segment of motion. I can use these equations in this segment of motion, but I can't use these equations for a time interval that spans different accelerations. A second and related point. These equations assume that the initial time was equal to zero. That was a simplification made when these equations were derived. Consequently, when we apply these equations segment by segment, we're effectively resetting the clock to zero at the beginning of each segment. And you can see that right here. We basically reset the clock to zero at the beginning of this segment, and then at the end of this segment, the clock was at four seconds. So we used four seconds here, not the total time from the very beginning of the motion, 10 seconds. Third point, there are often many different ways to solve these sorts of problems, and that's certainly the case here. Let me just illustrate a few different ways we could have done some different parts of this problem. So first, let's go back to the very beginning where we were calculating the displacement for the first six seconds of motion. Imagine that we didn't do this calculation here and instead started by trying to find the velocity at the end of this six seconds time interval. And we did this calculation and we got 30 meters per second. Well, we could put that information with the information of the initial velocity, zero meters per second, and the acceleration, and we could use this equation to solve for the displacement. That is, we plug in for the acceleration, five meters per second per second, plug in zero meters per second for the initial velocity, that's at the beginning of this segment, plug in 30 meters per second for the velocity at the end of this segment of motion, solve for delta x, and we would get 90 meters. Alternatively, again, assuming we didn't do this calculation here, but instead did this calculation and got a velocity of 30 meters per second in the positive x direction at the end of this six second time interval, we could start by finding the average velocity for this time interval here. The initial velocity, zero meters per second. The final velocity for this segment, 30 meters per second. Zero plus 30 gives me 30. Half of 30 is 15. So we'd have an average velocity for this segment of 15 meters per second. We could then use the definition of average velocity and solve for delta x. That is, plugging in 15 meters per second for the average velocity, multiplying by the time interval of six seconds, we would get delta x equal to 90 meters, just like we did here. Before moving on, I want to remind everyone to be very careful with this equation. This equation, like the three equations above it, is not generally valid unless the acceleration a sub x is constant. That's much more difficult to remember for this equation than for these because the acceleration a sub x does not appear explicitly in this equation. Hence the caution. We could have done this calculation itself differently by using the definition of average acceleration. So if the acceleration is constant for a particular interval of motion, then it's necessarily equal to its average value. So we could plug in five meters per second per second for the average acceleration. We could multiply by the time interval, six seconds during which that uh, acceleration happened five meters per second per second multiplied by six seconds would give us a change in velocity of 30 meters per second. Now, since the initial velocity was zero and we have a change of velocity of 30 meters per second, we would then get a velocity of 30 meters per second at the end of this six second time interval. It's no surprise that this should give the same result as this because this was derived from this in the case of constant acceleration. Finally, we could have calculated the displacement during the second segment of motion by using the definition of average velocity. We found that the velocity at the end of the first segment of motion was 30 meters per second in the positive x direction. That was necessarily the velocity at the beginning of the second segment of motion. In the second segment of motion, the velocity is constant, so that constant velocity is necessarily equal to its initial value of 30 meters per second. So we could plug in the 30 meters per second here for the average velocity during this 
segment of motion. The segment of motion took four seconds. So we'd have 30 meters per second times four seconds. And we'd get for delta x 120 meters, just like we did here. Now, while I went through a whole bunch of alternative solutions really fast in order to give you a rapid sense of the many possibilities, I encourage you to take the time to explore at least a couple of those alternative solutions in more detail on your own. Solving the same problem in different ways is a really great way to get a deeper understanding of all the interrelated physical concepts involved in these problems. All right, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.